Attention, everyone. If you thought you could silence me, think again. The time has come to unleash the truth that's been simmering beneath the surface. You've seen the frustration, the anger, the rage bubbling over, and it's not just about me anymore, it's about all of us who refuse to be silenced. Picture this, a wave of voices rising up, a chorus of people who've had enough of the status quo. They thought they could keep us in the shadows, but we're stepping into the light, and the world is about to witness our unstoppable force. They say the loudest voices are often the ones that are muted, but guess what? We're not backing down. This is our moment. This is our time to take charge and make sure our message echoes far and wide. Get ready to feel the energy shift because we're igniting a revolution of truth, passion, and raw determination. The countdown has begun, and there's no stopping us now. Buckle up, because this ride is about to get wild. You have no idea who you're dealing with, do you? People are starting to learn that they've crossed the wrong one, and honestly, they weren't ready. They missed that memo or completely skipped class when it was time to learn not to mess with you. Right now, you're in a season of gathering your strength, pulling yourself together like never before. It reminds me of that moment in House of the Dragon with King Viserys. He's struggling, barely holding on, and everyone's counting him out. His daughter, Renera, is desperate, pleading with him for help because she knows he's still the king, even though everyone else is plotting behind his back. You've been in that same position, exhausted, drained, and feeling like you were being counted out. People thought they could step in, take what wasn't theirs, and run things in your absence. But just like Viserys, who refuses to drink the milk of the poppy so he can think clearly and come through when it matters most, you are getting clear. You're done with the distractions and noise. You're seeing who's for you and who isn't. The things that no longer serve you, they're falling away and you are so thankful for the clarity that's setting you free. God is moving in your life, lifting you out of the weight of everything that's been holding you down. It's like you're being rescued, airlifted out of the chaos and attacks that have been coming your way. You're stepping into a new chapter, and nothing is going to stop you now. You're like the prince or princess who was destined to rise up and lead others into the light. It's similar to that unforgettable moment in House of the Dragon when no one expects Viserys to stand up for Renera in the debate over the throne. Everyone counts him out because he's so weak and tired, but then, slowly and painfully, he shows up. That's where you are right now, people don't expect you to show up or come through in this moment. Whoever I'm talking to, they're underestimating you, and they are going to regret it. There were certain people who thought you had handed them your power, thinking, oh, they've given me their trust, so I'll just act on their behalf. No, no, no. These people were taking advantage of your kindness, using it for their own benefit, and now you're starting to see it clearly. Your strength right now lies in recognizing where people have been using you, and you're not tolerating it anymore. You're tired of people thinking they can get one over on you because you're kind. Just like Viserys, who only wanted peace, People assumed you didn't want to fight or challenge them. They thought they could keep taking advantage of your generosity because they thought you were too exhausted to do anything about it. But now, you're waking up. You're realizing that you need to step back, rest, pray, and refocus. You're not letting anyone rule in your place anymore. You've seen the truth, and you're taking back your power. No more letting others decide for you. You are in control of your own legacy. This is showing up in all sorts of ways in your life. Oh, 11-11 on the clock, so you know this is confirmation. It could look like you're not feeling your best, dealing with some heavy spiritual battles, or even just staying home to handle your own business while everyone at work is plotting. They're scheming, trying to take your promotion, your title, or even your cubicle. It's like they're trying to take over, like a hostile takeover of your position. I think the word I'm looking for is usurp. That's what people are trying to do, usurp your place. If that's not the right word, I'll be mad at myself, but you get what I mean. They think they can just step in and take what's yours, as if they're doing you a favor. But here's the truth, they're not. You're beginning to realize that those around you aren't genuinely trying to help, instead, they're covertly attempting to undermine your power. It's as if they expect you to be oblivious, but you're wide awake and aware of their tactics. 
You've been given a wake-up call to the reality of the situation. They assumed you would simply surrender your strength and influence, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Your power is still very much intact, right there within you, ready to be unleashed. While they scurry about, gossiping from cubicle to cubicle and congregating by the water cooler, plotting how they might take your job or your rightful place, they're in for a surprise. The plot twist is that you haven't relinquished your power at all. In fact, you are the unexpected twist in their scheme. As they maneuver to position themselves as helpful, completing tasks or offering to cover for you, their true intentions become clearer. They're not merely being supportive, they're eyeing your growth, your potential, and the accolades that come with it. They think they can outsmart you while your back is turned, but you see through their facade. You're tuned into the energy around you and aware of the subtle shifts in behavior. You recognize that their efforts are not for your benefit but a veiled attempt to secure their own interests at your expense. This clarity empowers you to reclaim your space and assert your boundaries. You're not just an observer in this game, you're a player who understands the dynamics at play. This newfound awareness allows you to navigate the situation with confidence. You can strategize your next moves with precision, knowing that your strength lies not just in your skills but also in your ability to read the intentions of others. You're awakening to your full potential, ready to rise above their underhanded tactics. You're taking the reins, determined to forge your own path forward, fully aware that the crown belongs to you and you alone. Stand firm in your worth, and remember that you are in control of your destiny. The more they try to undermine you, the more resolute you become. You have the vision and insight to transform their schemes into stepping stones for your own success. Embrace this clarity as you move forward, knowing you are on the brink of an empowering chapter in your life. Maybe you're someone who's 33, or the number 3 holds a lot of meaning for you, and you're seeing 333 everywhere. That's a sign of your power, of your angelic, protective energy. You're like this earth angel, with wings that see everything. You've got eyes on your wings, and those wings are showing everyone, Nope, you can't take my power. I'm in control of this. I know what's happening. It's time for everyone to take their seat and know their place. Too many people are out here trying to leverage your name and reputation, pretending to lend a helping hand when they're really just using you as a stepping stone for their own gain. They'll say things like, Oh, Susie said I could handle this for her, as if you ever granted them that authority. They might try to play the role of your loyal assistant, but your clarity has sharpened, and you see right through their facade. You've transformed from feeling exhausted and overwhelmed to being light years ahead of them, 19 steps ahead, in fact. This is your comeback season, and you're reclaiming your power. It's clear that there are those around you who are envious of the abundant feast that God is preparing for you. Just like in House of the Dragon, where everyone is scheming and plotting at the wedding, you find yourself in a similar situation. But remember, this is your time to shine, and no one is going to spoil your feast. You possess a fierce resilience that can weather any storm, and nothing can stand in the way of what's truly meant for you. People might gaze at you with jealousy, akin to how they look at Renra, believing she's spoiled because she's the heir to the Iron Throne, has devoted admirers, and the freedom to choose her suitor. Queen Allison steps in, ready for battle, filled with jealousy and resentment. Likewise, individuals in your life are revealing their true colors, thinking that your position is weakening, not realizing that you're keenly aware of their intentions. Now, you're reclaiming your energy, courage, and strength. You're not just wearing your crown, you're embodying it. You're taking the time to celebrate yourself, embracing the moments of joy amidst the chaos, just as Renera does. You may not have everything figured out, but you're finding beauty in the imperfect moments and exuding confidence while doing so. You're recognizing that despite the challenges, you deserve to bask in your glory. Every glance of envy, every whisper of doubt directed toward you only fuels your determination. They can plot and scheme all they want, but it only serves to strengthen your resolve. As you embrace your authenticity and navigate this season of growth, remember that you have every right to enjoy your successes, revel in your accomplishments, and cherish the journey. You're unstoppable, and this season is yours to conquer. There's a lot of jealousy around you, similar to how Queen Alicent felt towards Renera. 
Alicent had to marry the king, much older, as part of her father's power move to push Renera aside. What was once a close friendship quickly turned into rivalry. In your case, people are underestimating you, thinking they can take advantage of your peaceful nature. But you're showing them that just because you're composed, doesn't mean you're weak. Your grace under pressure will be remembered, and people will see that you're the one standing strong, not the one who's gone off course. You're calling people out with precision, holding your ground, and refusing to let anyone twist your words or take what's yours. There's envy surrounding you, especially as you rise back up from any setbacks you faced. You're no longer down and out, and people can see that. You're making big changes and taking your power back. This comeback is yours, and you deserve every bit of it. You're not giving up or backing down, you're standing tall and claiming what's rightfully yours. If anyone is trying to make you feel unworthy of care and support, it's time to set the record straight. You are reclaiming your worth, and there's no need for doubt. You deserve that throne, that position, that level up, and all the divine guidance and protection in your life. It's easy to fall into thoughts of feeling forgotten or unloved, but remember this, I am always enough. You might have been feeling drained and exhausted, like Eris at the end of the season, where everything seems to be falling apart and people are only out for their own gain. You're starting to realize that you won't be a feast for the crows anymore. You have your own abundance, and no one can take that from you. Don't let anyone shame you for recognizing your worth or for wanting to distance yourself from negative influences. It's perfectly fine to stand up for yourself, even if others label it as selfish. You've made your boundaries clear, and if they act like your no means yes, that's on them. It's crucial to surround yourself with loving, genuine people. If someone brings unnecessary drama or negativity into your life, it's time to let that go. Pay attention to who you're surrounding yourself with because you deserve to be among good-hearted individuals who uplift you. Some individuals who once seemed well-intentioned are now showing lower vibrations. You're not judging them, instead, you're choosing to excuse yourself from their negativity. You no longer seek anyone's approval, realizing that trying to please others only led to being taken advantage of. It's time to stop letting others feast on your efforts. You're reinventing your sanctuary and gaining clarity on how to protect your space, whether it's your personal growth, reputation, or comeback. You are resilient, and affirm this, I am sunshine embodied. I turn lemons into legacy. I am viciously resilient. Anyone who thought you needed them to fix you is mistaken. You're discovering that all you touch turns to gold, you have the Midas touch, and you deserve every bit of it. After every storm, the sky's clear, and though you've been weathering challenges, you're learning to think before judging others. You won't engage in gossip or harsh judgments because you understand what it feels like to be judged during your own storms. Love is a complex journey. You may have once judged someone, but now you feel compassion and empathy. It's vital to think before passing judgment, as this mindset will lighten your spirit. You're having honest conversations with yourself about what needs to change in your life and how to prioritize your own needs. Those who are indecisive must choose a side, straddling the fence isn't acceptable. Trust your clarity, even if miscommunications feel prevalent. Focus on meditation, affirmations, and prayer to reclaim your power. Affirm, this is my season. This is my crown. This is my parade. This is my feast. People may challenge you, but will regret it. You're embracing confidence and connecting with spirit, realizing it's your time to shine. As you move out of stagnation, know that you are the firecracker heating things up. Affirm, I am right to be strong and optimistic about the opportunities ahead. You're discovering your authentic self, shedding masks worn for others. New beginnings are on the horizon as you tap into a fresh energy. It feels like a rejuvenating transformation bringing you joy and excitement. You're done adapting to others' plans when you know yours is better. You have a superior strategy and aren't settling for less. The farther gate signifies that while some may try to take shortcuts, you're moving on to greater opportunities. You're taking bold steps forward, and you should be proud of your resilience. Despite facing challenges, you're still standing strong, and others are intimidated by your comeback. 
You absolutely deserve to be cared for. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear, confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be alright before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So, what would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bully told me, boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, when you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, what seminary? I explained, it's preacher school. His response was, preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. 
You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While He doesn't promise comfort, He does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago, but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with His plan to make a significant impact in the world for His glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith? Take a risk and embrace the call. The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. 
God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. What are you right now? What are you fighting? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting against? We're broken people living in a broken world, which means we're all fighting something. It's just how life works until heaven. For some of you, maybe it's fighting for freedom from things like anxiety, depression, insecurity, loneliness, and self-doubt. For others, maybe you're fighting for a loved one, praying for them to experience freedom, to find Jesus, to experience life change. Some of you might be praying about starting a family, while others are battling to keep one intact, whether it's fighting for your marriage, a dream, or against a difficult diagnosis. Life can be challenging, and it's easy to feel worn out. Sometimes, we get disheartened, frustrated, and tempted to give up, even if only for a little while. We might think, I'm just done. I'm done praying because nothing seems to change. I'm done trusting God because it doesn't feel like He's listening. I'm done believing that He has a plan for me. I'm done trying to obey, to give, to serve, to show up, to invite people to church, to share my faith, my story, or to make a difference in this world. Nothing seems to be going my way. I'm done. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Paul addressed similar feelings when he wrote to Timothy. Timothy was struggling, feeling overwhelmed and ready to give up. Paul's message to him was clear, stop it. You weren't given a spirit of fear or timidity. The term Paul used actually refers to cowardice. He was telling Timothy, stop acting like a coward. God has equipped you with a fighter spirit. You have been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. To fully experience the plans that God has for you, you need to take a step similar to what I've done. It begins with this, you must fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. So, Timothy, you need to fight the fight too. It won't be easy, 
but you're capable of it. Fight the fight and finish the race. Paul added, I have fought the fight, and I have finished the race. Understand this, because there is opposition and because you're human, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But you have the choice to persevere. Many people start strong, but only a few follow through to the end. If you want to embrace all that God has for you, you need to resolve. I know I'll face challenges because I have a warrior spirit within me. I can't control the obstacles that come my way, but I can control whether I give up. I am committed to finishing this race. Remember, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. You can't give up. You need to stay the course. The faithful actions we take, even the small, consistent steps over time, have a profound impact. Being diligent in the little things may seem minor, but it's actually a significant part of the journey. Each day, we're in a battle, sometimes just a battle to maintain our sanity. But you must keep fighting. Remember this, victory is always on the other side of a struggle. It's consistently found beyond the fight. As Galatians 6 verse 9 puts it, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's natural to feel tempted to quit when faced with setbacks or exhaustion, especially when it seems like your efforts go unrecognized or unappreciated. But don't let weariness stop you. Keep pushing forward, even when it's tough, because the reward is always worth the fight. But we persevere because it's the right thing to do. In Galatians 5 verse 7, the Apostle Paul asked the church, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? If the devil can get you discouraged and keep you in that state, he can prevent you from continuing. That's the real challenge. Theodore Roosevelt once said, Courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have the strength. Even when you feel you don't have the energy to continue, you must keep moving forward. How many times have you told yourself or others, I'm done. I can't keep going. It's easy to become disheartened when things don't progress as quickly as we'd like. But it's crucial to push through, even when the road seems long and challenging. Stay strong and don't lose heart in doing good, because in time, you will reap the rewards if you don't give up. There is a promise of a harvest. So, keep your faith and stay committed. Remember those times when you were absolutely certain that your vision for your life was going to come to fruition. You were unstoppable, determined that nothing or no one would deter you from achieving your goals. It felt like it was already within your grasp. But what happened to that certainty? The Bible reflects this sentiment with a question, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom is the vision I want to live by. Stand firm in this conviction and don't let yourself be burdened again by the weight of old constraints. The message is clear, you were doing so well. Remember who or what caused you to stray from the truth. What changed? This kind of influence doesn't come from the one who called you. You were on the right path, had a clear vision, but then real life intervened. As the famous quote by Mike Tyson goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This quote, from an interview before his fight with Evander Holyfield, is a powerful reminder that adversity is a part of life. The interviewer noted that this insight applies far beyond boxing, to any area of life, whether it's health issues, job losses, poor investments, or everyday frustrations. What truly matters is how you respond to these challenges, not the challenges themselves. We all want to feel like we're making progress, doing well, and making a difference. We want to sense that we're moving forward, having an impact, and making strides. That's a natural desire, and it's important to keep that perspective alive as you navigate life's ups and downs. So, what happens next? Life throws its punches. I've mentioned Mike Tyson's quote so many times, including just yesterday during a chat with friends. I said, Mike Tyson's line about fighting resonates so well, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. It's a perfect analogy for life, isn't it? We all have grand plans, but then life hits us hard, and suddenly we're faced with, well, that wasn't part of the plan. What do I do now? In those moments, it's easy to feel like everything is falling apart and consider giving up. 
But if you look at anyone who has achieved something significant or is pursuing a meaningful goal, you'll find they've all faced their share of setbacks and challenges. The common thread among those who accomplish great things and live abundant lives is their resilience. They all experienced difficulties and were punched in the mouth by life, but they didn't let those setbacks stop them. Instead, they persevered through adversity and kept moving forward. Here's what you won't find on the list of keys to success. A life free of challenges, a perfectly rigid plan that always went as expected without needing any flexibility or adaptation. Does anyone actually achieve success this way? Does anyone succeed by making excuses, blaming others, and playing the victim while rarely following through on their commitments? Is anyone's story about everyone in their life always agreeing with them and supporting them without exception? Or is it about achieving everything solo, without any help? No one who lives a significant life has avoided the walls of reality, where things don't go as planned, and they had to adjust their strategies. Everyone has faced moments of disappointment and had to overcome blame and excuses. What sets apart those who achieve greatness and find true fulfillment from those who often feel empty is their perseverance. It's their determination to keep pushing forward, their grit to see things through, and their refusal to give up. This relentless drive and willingness to adapt and persist, despite obstacles, is what truly makes the difference between the average and the extraordinary. Pastor Craig often illustrates this with a powerful story about a donkey that fell into a pit. As people walked by and saw the situation, they decided that there was no way to rescue the donkey, so they thought, let's just bury him and make it quick. They started shoveling dirt into the pit. Each time a shovelful of dirt landed on the donkey, he would shake it off and step up. More dirt came, and he shook it off and stepped up again. It might have been the 1,000th or 10,000th shovelful, but eventually, the pit became shallower and shallower until the donkey was able to walk out. This story shows the importance of resilience. No matter how tough things get, whether you're facing financial troubles, health issues, or family problems, you need to shake it off and keep moving forward. It's not the time to quit or complain. Even when you're down, remember that we serve a God who specializes in comebacks. Quitting is easy, and that's why many people do it. But you are not one of those people. Micah 7 verse 8 reminds us, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. You might get knocked down, but it's not the end. God will never declare it's over until you win. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, A righteous man falls seven times but rises again. To overcome the devil, you only need to get up one more time than you've been knocked down. Keep getting up and never quit. The pain of giving up and the regret that follows is far greater than the pain of perseverance. God promises rewards for those who endure. The key is to keep showing up. You cannot keep a person down who refuses to stay down. It's one thing to be knocked down, but the real challenge is to refuse to remain down. There are people here who can testify that, although they've been knocked down, God continually provides the strength, energy, and power to get back up. Every time something or someone has brought them down, God has lifted them up again. Life isn't about avoiding being knocked down, it's about refusing to stay down. You've come too far to give up now. You need to keep fighting because, in his name, there is nothing you can't overcome. If you're feeling like giving up, I understand that temptation, but don't do it. Remember, God is on your side, just as he told Peter he was praying for him so that his faith would remain strong. Let God be your source of encouragement. He is in your corner, and with his support, you will emerge victorious. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, 
and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the One who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. 
These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. 
Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.